I am Jim Fitzgerald, a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and Innovation Master, and I'm going to discuss statistics. This is a two-part series because who wants to gulp down too much statistics at once? This is the second and last of presentations on statistics. Part two continues on with some parametric or statistics that require a normal distribution but then also includes some non-parametric statistics for distributions that are either not normally distributed or unknown. I include this slide just to let the presentation stand on its own. However, for a discussion on this, view the part one of this presentation. Let's discuss the first statistic. The one sample proportion test is used when you might want to determine if there is an impact to one part of a population that is different from the rest of the population. This test uses discrete data. An example could be looking at trees beside a freeway and determining whether those trees contain more automobile pollutants than the general population of trees or not. Let's move on to the binomial test, which also analyzes discrete data. The binomial test is listed twice here. The first representation is the most used version of this test and is used to test discrete data samples. The bottom list shows that the test can also be used for continuous sample data if you have a large number of samples. The discrete use of the binomial test is used to determine if there is a deviation from a theoretical distribution of observations. For example, let's say you have a random number generator for numbers from 1 to 10. This test would tell you if the counted number of fours are statistically what you would expect, or you could test if the loose rivets on an airplane tail is within bounds. The only thing I will say about the binomial test for large numbers of n greater than 100, that the binomial distribution approaches the Poisson distribution. Finally, we get to the non-parametric statistical tests. These are the tests you use when the population distribution is not normal or you don't know what the population distribution is. Fortunately, the non-parametric tests are almost as accurate as the parametric tests. As a suggestion, you might want to use a parametric and non-parametric test to compare them. Again, use the Anderson-Darling normality test to verify whether or not your distribution is normal. The Mann-Whitney test can be used to determine if two independent samples were pulled from the same population, that is, having the same mean. An example could be the effectiveness of advertising for two rival products. Customer preference could be ascertained, and then Mann-Whitney could help you determine the advertising effectiveness. Levine's test is used for variances, like Mann-Whitney is used for means. An example could be testing whether a new drug impacts wakefulness. You run a randomized test with a placebo and the drug. Then measure wakefulness and use Levine's test to determine whether the drug had an impact on the variation of wakefulness or not. There may be times when you are more concerned about medians than means and your distribution is not normal. For instance, a median is less sensitive to outliers. That's the time to use Mood's test. An example might be that you have three assembly lines and you measure their lead times. Then you use Mood's test to determine whether there are true differences between the different lines' performance. Friedman's test is used to test treatments for consistency. You may be in a situation where you're using treatments and want to know if there's a difference between treatment effects. One example could be that you have a business that makes guitars. Each guitar is finished with a coat of lacquer. Your lacquer salesman says that he has a new lacquer that outperforms the current brand with respect to blemishes. Friedman's test is designed to let you know if there is a statistical difference between those two treatments. The correct use of statistics is critical to the confidence of your results. Making sure the prerequisite questions are answered is the right first step. Using statistics accurately can help you understand the performance of your organization. 
Statistics have value in any business as demonstrated in the example. Answer the questions on the second slide, engage the expert in the field of statistics, analyze the problem you're trying to solve, and finally, conduct your experiment. I am Jim Fitzgerald, a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and Innovation Master. I hope you have enjoyed this quick, high-level journey through statistics. My job is to manage statistical experts and make sure statistics are used correctly. Good luck in your use of statistics to improve your organization. Every organization can improve through the effective use of statistics.